Hello and welcome to Michigan and International Speedway. International? I think it's international. I don't know. But um, we're here in Brooklyn, Michigan, ready for the 2003 MP Cup Series race. And uh, looks like one car is slow getting up to speed. Now they're, now they're rolling. That's Chris Mack in the 86. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a crazy race. Um, I, I know that already. We're using the same package I used when I was on was playing a demo back when I um, had that short period of being in China and I had this game on the computer um, when I went there hopefully it wasn't illegal if it was oh well it is what it is um, I didn't know but ain't nothing we can do about it now it's the past but um yeah it's that same package and that package was really just chaos um, but it was very entertaining so we're gonna see how this goes because uh, the demo only the demo only allows you to have 12 cars at the tr on the track at once and we have 43 so this might be bad but we're about to find out now coming out of turn four tony stewart's on the pole elliot sattler in second with kenny wallace and hermie sattler on the row behind them carl long in fifth place with ken schrader rounding up the top six in that 49 lots of underdogs in the front here tony stewart on pole um, he's not another dog, but the green flag is out and we're racing here in Michigan. Heading through turns one and two now for the first time. And let me actually turn my camera on. But, um, I don't need it on the high mode like that. But yeah, we made it through one and two the first time by, so that's pretty good, actually. Who's being made in the back already? They're four wide now. This might not end well. Oh, they're they're squeezing off a of turn four. They're somehow gonna make it out alive, and we're gonna complete a lap here in Michigan. So this package doesn't seem too bad now. They are gonna be bunched up, and they might run out of room from time to time. As you see right there, they're going into wall. One car just flipped. I didn't see who that was, and the caution is out. We're racing back to the line. Ryan Newman has heavy damage two cars are upside down elliot sattler and johnny benson are flipping in one and two meanwhile out in front carl long has the lead he's racing back to the line big pack of cars still as they come through three and four looks like they're gonna make it a make it a back around alive as carl long leads the race to the yellow flag that's pretty random isn't it but a terrible wreck right off right off this off the bat here on the first couple of laps here as uh, you see two cars on their roofs already so we're gonna take a quick look at what just happened here Johnny Benson on the bottom left of four or what in the middle middle of the left of on ugh, in the middle on the left of four wide there the car was outside looks like Sattler and Newman trying to squeeze they both going for the same spot and they ran out of room and they all go up the track there goes Wimmer and they go hard and then the outside wall I've said it before I'll say it again we need safer barriers on these tracks because we're going way too fast and someone's going to get hurt out here Indianapolis shouldn't be the only car with safer barriers you see Sattler getting up into the catch fence and gets hits the 10 in a way that just flipped them over Gets up into the fence again, comes down on the wall, and tumbles some more. Wild ride for Elliot Sattler here. He had a crash here at Michigan back in 2000 as well. That sent him up and over, but it was nothing like that. And Johnny Benson just got rolled under his roof and slid there. He lands upside down. That's going to take him out of the race. Ryan Newman's destroyed. Everyone else is still going. And we're going to watch some of these guys on the race back, making sure everyone made it through. Looks like they did. So the caution is out here in Michigan after a wild one. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're going to drop the green flag after this. We are back here on FS1 and getting ready to go green once again. So, um, yeah, uh, next week we go road course racing, turning right a couple of times at 
Sonoma, or excuse me, Infineon, um, the Infineon Raceway, um, Infineon, Infineon, however you say it, I don't, I don't really care. Some people say it either way, but it doesn't matter to me. But uh, yeah, we're racing in Sonoma, California, the Infineon Raceway, and that should be pretty interesting. That will be the last broadcast here on Fox before we switch it over to NBC. So um, that should be pretty interesting as well. And uh, meanwhile, coming through three and four now. Carl Long in the lead. Casey Atwood is in second. And look at that 46. As he is out in front in that Dodge. Not many sponsors on that car, but he might gain a couple after this race. Carl Long has the lead uh, as the pace car heads in the pit road. We're going to go green any second now. And here they come. They're getting back up to speed now. Casey Atwood had a good restart there. Stayed with him. Here comes Kenny Wallace to the inside on the back or on the front stretch here, heading down into turn one on the inside of Jerry Nadu. Kevin LePage follows him. Luckily, to think these single file um, restarts are keeping everyone pretty much pretty spread out. We do have a little bit of three wide action further back, but they sorted that out pretty quickly. Chris Mack goes way high. He's going to fall back. But that 86 is fast. He's just using the draft here. Look at this. John Andretti. He's trying not. He's going to give him a little bump. Now going to go to his, his outside, try to get some luck up there in the high side. But. Did I just hear a car spinning? No, I did not. Okay. I could have swore I heard the car spinning. Might might have been my tire or the 86 tire squealing. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So we're three wide throughout the pack. The one of Steve Park on the bottom. Remember his horrible crash back at, at Atlanta a couple weeks ago. Or Month, a month or so ago now. Glad to see him back in that race car. After that, that 86 is very loose. He's just trying to hang on to it with that setup there. Behind that 24. He's trying, he's fighting the car while also fighting his way back up through the field. But look at this. Big pack of cars now. They're all bunched up together. The 66 of Hideo Fukuyama. Uh, the Japanese driver trying to make something happen here. He had a pretty good race going last week in his debut, and there's contact being made as they're four wide heading into one. That almost didn't end well. But, um, yeah, as I was saying, Hideo had a good first race going until he got involved in that crash. And that ended his day prematurely there. They're still four wide. This is not going to end well. Yeah, we're probably going to have to find a new package for these, uh, for this track as well because this is not working this is not it but this is in fact the fastest track here on the schedule they are flat out the entire time we got trouble into the wall it's the 49 of Ken Schrader the 01 of Jerry Nadu and more trouble here in turn one once again another wreck on the back stretch we got more trouble. Big, big crash on the back stretch. Car upside down. That's the 09. I believe the 09 of Buckshot Jones it is. And he gets clipped once again. And that's the third car getting upside down today in, in this race. Oh. All right, going to have to tab out for a second here. Hopefully it doesn't end the recording. I just didn't want to spoil anything concerning the wreck. But uh, let's see what happened here. Oh, four wide. That is not going to work. We were just talking about Hideo Fukuyama in the uh, 66. And it looks like he might have been caught up in the middle of this here. As it got started off of turn two. Yeah, contact was made. Sent them down in the Rusty Wallace. Clips him up the track into the 60 of Brian Vickers. Sending him in the wall. Hideo in the 66. Goes around. Jack Sprague is... In it, whoa, look at the 86, almost turned over. 
And look at the, he's still in the air. We're going to watch him now. It looks like he's turning over right there. He is. So that's four cars in this race that have gone on their roofs. Very wild race so far already. 11 laps in. And four cars have flipped. Chris Mack got up on his lid. Just rolled it. He didn't hit anything. He might actually be fine. Look at him. He's still going. Oh, he spun it in the grass. Might have a little bit of suspension damage, but other than that, I believe he's fine. We're going to go on board with that 86. Oh, they just checked up right in front of him. There was nothing he could do, and the weight shifts, and up and over he goes. And there goes our camera. On board with Matt Kansas here in the 17. Start wrecking. He's checking up, trying to make it through. Oh, just a little bit of contact with Jack Sprague at the end there. He would have been fine. He would have been fine if that didn't happen. Now, where is that 09 of Bugshot Jones? There he is. He's in the middle of all this. Or wait, no, he's in the bottom. He's on the bottom. So, what happened here? Oh, McMurray, they started making contact. Chris Mack runs into the back of him. Gets hit in the side, then gets hit in the door, and then gets hit. And then, oh, Jason Hedelski in the 90. That hit right there is what sent him over. And he just slides along on his roof. Bounces off the 80, uh, the 18 of Bobby Labonte. Almost got back on his wheels there. But he stays on his lid. And this is the fourth week, I believe, in a row. Where we've had a flip. This time we've had four of them. In the first 11 laps. So we're going to have to do something about this. These cars keep turning over very easily. And it's a very scary sight to see, but... Luckily, it hasn't ended up too horribly for anyone. Chris Mack has actually already been upside down this season. Remember, at Atlanta, his home track, first race at his home track, and he went up and over. That was a very scary wreck, but looks like he was, I think he was fine. Walked away with a little bit of soreness. But yeah, two cars turning over here at Michigan on the back straightaway. Chaos. 11 laps into this race. Can't say we didn't expect it with this package, but we're gonna go to break as John and Dreddy, I believe, is, no, he is not your leader. Where is the leader? He's in the back. Oh, Carl Long continues to lead here at Michigan. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back with a drop of the green flag after this. Welcome back. As, um, I believe the 46 has an issue that we must report on here. And they're trying to get that solved here on Pitt Road. A lot of time spent on the, yep, out of the race. So, Carl Long, who was leading, having issues. And we got a car stopped. There was lots of trouble on Pitt Road here. Wild Pit stops. We heard the 46 say something was wrong with the car, so we have to bring it back here and keep you updated. But we are going to be right back once again for the drop of the green flag after this. Welcome back to Michigan, Interna Michigan International Speedway in Brooklyn, Michigan. We're 15 laps in, and to catch you up on all the carnage that has happened... Um, we've had four cars getting upside down here today in a very wild race. Um, four cars, two separate wrecks with two separate uh, cars getting upside down. So uh, we, are, we are definitely going to have to find some way to fix this because these cars, if they keep on turning over. And it's very scary indeed. But, um... Dave Blaney is your leader, Kyle Petty in second, and Rusty Wallace, who actually had a bit of that wreck earlier, is in third. Jeff Gordon with rear end damage is in fourth. And that's Todd Bodine in the 54, rounding out your top five. As we come through three and four, and we're getting ready to drop the green flag once again. And um, 
we have 60 laps of this madness. Oh my goodness. Lots of torn up race cars already. We're only 15 laps in. Pace car is in. Heading down pit road. Dave Blaney coming to the flag stand. And the green flag is out. Kyle Petty with a great restart there. He timed it perfectly and pulls to the outside. Now they're going to be side by side. Heading down into turn one. And uh, don't mind the... Oh, we got trouble on the restart here. Morgan Shepard racing for Jesus in that 89. And Chris Mack have made contact and gone around on the restart. We're going to have to... We're going to have to take a look at what just happened here. Oh, Greg Biffle into the wall and nowhere for that 86 to go. Nothing he could do. And poor Morgan Shepard was just an innocent bystander that got collected in that. We're going to go on board with the 25. Did I say Brian Vickers? I met uh, Joe, Nem Joe Nemechek. But, um... Yeah, Greg Biffle and Nemechek. Oh, the 22 got into the wall as well there. And who hit the 25 late? I, I believe that was the 21 of Ricky Rudd that hit him, right? We're going to go on board with Rudd here on the restart. No, that was Jack Sprague. That was the zero of Jack Sprague. Who got upside down last week at Pocono. It was actually a pretty, pretty big wreck there. A lot of cars made slight contact. Not too much significant damage in that wreck, but a lot of cars were involved in it as Kyle Petty got a massive run down the back stretch. Caution is immediately gonna come back out. Kyle Petty's your leader. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Brooklyn, Michigan. We only have about 21 cars left on the lead lap, and I believe 21 cars left in the race as well, unless I'm missing someone here. I believe Tony Stewart's out. No, he's still in. So we have 22 at the least, or at the at least 22 cars left in this race. I believe John Andretti makes 23. Morgan Shepard's still in. And um, I believe Greg Biffle is out of the race. So if that's where it ends. 24 cars left in this race. And we're only 20 laps in. We've had more caution laps than green flag laps here. But we're getting ready to go green. Hopefully this will turn things around. But so far, it has been a wreck fest. It's been an absolute demolition derby here at Michigan. Can't say we didn't expect chaos, but my goodness, not this level of chaos. Four cars got upside down in the first 11 laps. But the green flag is back out. We're racing once again here in Michigan. Kyle Petty leads them to the green with Hermie Sattler in second place in the 0-2. And we saw Hermie's brother, Elliot, get upside down earlier today and roll and hit the catch fence even. Um, he is okay. So, no, I need to worry about him. Everyone was okay in that after that wreck. Now Hermie Sattler racing for the lead here. And here comes the 74. That's Tony Raines. It, and he is actually on the lead lap. I was about to say I believe he's a lap down. But he's on the lead lap. He just went up the third. He restarted fifth. And he's... Making moves here on the restart. A couple of cars down pit road already. Not sure what that's all about. But we are spreading them out a little bit. As there's really not enough competitive cars to get a big pack anyway. So that's a good sign. Hopefully no more um, bad wrecks here. As Hermie Sattler looks to the inside of Kyle Petty. And they're side by side down the front stretch. Will Hermie Sattler lead a lap under green? That was way too close to call. They were dead even at the line. And I believe Sattler did lead that lap. Yes, he did. And now here comes Tony Raines in the 74. 
an all white Chevrolet. No sponsors on that car, but he's working it, working his way to the front. He's got a push from the 23 of Kenny Wallace. And he's got Brian Vickers on his tail as well. Vickers had a small piece in that accident on the back stretch earlier, earlier, earlier here today. And um, now he's back up into the mix. They're four wide heading into turn one. Contact. This did not end well earlier and they're wrecking. And that's Kenny Wallace into the wall hard. Kyle Petty's destroyed. And he's had terrible luck this season. I was hoping they keep it clean and he just got size wiped. <laughs> I, I was hoping they keep it clean for at least a couple of laps. They did, but it ended in more wrecked race cars here. Off a of turn four to race back to the line. Tony Reigns with the push from top of nine in the 54 is going to lead the race back to the line. And he will be your leader under caution. But more chaos here. Um, so we're going to go back and take a quick look at that. And we're also actually going to, um, after this race, we're going to go back and take a look at that wreck that happened. Because we didn't, we didn't take a, we took a look at the one on the, on the back stretch. We didn't take the, a look at the one that, the first one that happened. So we're going to take a look at that one as well. Actually, we can go ahead and do that now. Yeah, we can do that now. But there's there's our look at that wreck. Just running out of room once again. Same old story. Now heading back to lap 11. As I believe now we do finally have an angle of that accident. On the second restart of this race. Or was it the first? I am not sure. So, yeah. Not too many cars caught up in this one compared to the one that happened. Literally the same lap, but same old story. Running out of room and into the wall hard went Ken Schrader, Ward Burton, and Jerry Nadu. And, um, luckily everyone was okay after that one as well but those were some pretty big hits and then you see the contact rusty wallace and brian vickers going into the wall and chaos happening behind them there's michael walker spinning jamie mcmurray flew in the, the side of him i mean there's just cars everywhere oh tony reigns i didn't notice that tony reigns in the 74 actually was involved in it and he made it through without making any significant contact with anybody. There's Jason Hedelski T-boning the 18 late. Jimmy Johnson clipping the upside down 0-9 of Buckshot Jones. Some things I didn't notice here in the first time around. But we're going to go back um, to the live feed. And we're going to take a quick break. And come back. We're going to drop the green flag after this. Welcome back to Brooklyn, Michigan. The MG Cup Series is making their first trip to Michigan International Speedway, a two-mile super speedway in Brooklyn, Michigan, and um, already just carnage, chaos. And I'll tell you what, this hasn't been pretty, but that last restart showed us a sign of hope. And maybe a sign of things to come. Because we did make it a few laps and have some good racing before that wreck did end up happening. So if this race goes like, like it did earlier on that last restart, then I doubt we'll have anything to worry about. But you never know. With this package, they get big runs on each other and nobody lifts. Nobody wants to lift. You can't afford to lift and lose that momentum. It's like the, it's like the 2020 um, NASCAR Cup Series package, actually. The 2019 and 2021 package. So, you just can't afford to lift. You can't afford to lose that momentum. Tony Reigns with a little bit of right front damage after being involved in that wreck earlier today. 
he's leading the race now as we come to the green flag and we're racing once again here in Michigan and with all the a lot of top contenders taken out of this race other than Jeff Burden as you see him on the inside Ward Burden's back there as well after being involved in that wreck earlier but Jeff Burton challenging for the lead. And look at Casey Atwood in the 91 on the outside with a big run off of turn two there. And now he's looking at the inside. So, yeah, as I was saying, a lot of top contenders taken out in this race already. So we're going to have a pretty good chance at seeing an underdog winner. But look at the two of Rusty Wallace. Going to make sure that doesn't happen. Making it three wide on the bottom. Dave Blaney might take him four wide. He backs off. Decides not to do that. But he's gonna he's gonna hug that yellow line and try to sneak underneath that two car. He doesn't have that much draft help. He might have to slide in line if he does. And uh, 60 of Brian Vickers still in this race. I mean, we still got a pretty decent sized field. So any of these guys could win. Chris Mack with roof damage on that car after getting upside down earlier he's still in this race and he's still trying to get the best position that he can john andretti coming out of pit road right now he might that might be a factor that might slow some of these leaders down they're three wide off the of turn two jeff gordon and jeff burton side by side they almost made contact i couldn't tell if they did from this angle but it looked like they looked like they kept it off of each other Tony Reigns falling back. Does not have any help on that outside. And that's really what you need here. Some drafting help. As Jeff Gordon hops down to the bottom. Now back up to the top. So we're going to fly by in a turn one there. Casey Atwood leading this thing. But Rusty Wallace is right there. Not going to let it happen easily. Oh, sorry. I have to uh, get a little bit of water there. So much action happening here. I have to, got to stay hydrated. But John Andretti on the front stretch, he's not too far off the pace. So hopefully it doesn't hold them up too badly when they catch him. But they're three wide as Tony Reigns is trying to get back up into the top five. And he does underneath Todd Bodine and Jeff Gordon there. Now he's got a massive run down the back stretch. Peeking to the inside of Dave Blaney. Does not lift. Blaney gives him room. They're three wide. And now Tony Reigns is back up to second. Here comes Brett Bodine. Or Todd Bodine, excuse me. They're four wide down the front, front stretch. Back down to three. Oh my goodness. Blocks being thrown and everything here. here this is the real action. And look at Chris Mack in the 86. He's somehow staying in it, even with that damage. He doesn't have the straight line speed, but he's staying in the draft and making sure he can stay up there and stay with these guys. So, as long as you have draft, I mean, a draft can go a long way with this package, and that's it's showing here. A car with roof damage is in the fight for the lead. So they're three wide heading down into turn one now. Looking at four wide, Chris Mack on the inside. He's been struggling to control that car all day. Now he's got suspension damage, and that's making it even harder. He gets all over the place. Almost made contact with Rusty Wallace in the two. He's got his hands full, but he's trying to put a move on here. And now some of the field getting held up here. Tony Stewart, and there's Morgan Shepard. Nowhere for Jeff Gordon to go. And he's getting held up big time. They finally get by. Dave Blaney suffered that same fate as well. And that's going to end their chances of getting it done here today. Tony Reigns gets back out in front. Contact with Rusty Wallace and Chris Mack almost sent him sideways. Rusty abandons that 86. They're three wide down the back stretch. Heading into three, he clears them. And that 86, 86 has no draft help now. He's trying to get back in the draft. The 60 all over his bumper. They're clipping each other. They're almost wrecking. Here comes Casey Atwood. He's going to go through the middle and try to push Todd Bodine out in front. They're four wide behind them. 
heading into turn one. This is going to get pretty tight. Contact being made. And they somehow kept it straight. Brian Vickers, it looked like he was going to get pushed up in the, the lap car of John Andretti, who's for some reason still with the field here. I guess he wants to have a chance to race to get his lap back. It's the only real logical explanation that I can think of, other than the AI just being stupid. But we know, we know it's just the AI being dumb. Kyle Petty has no hood, and he's going to hold up most of the field. Look at this, Hermie Sattler as well. He was just challenging for the lead a couple of laps ago, and then he got involved in that wreck. Lots of red, white, and blue schemes being shown there. Chris Mack on the high side trying to stay in the draft here. And he's got a pretty good toe down the back stretch. Todd Bodine just trying to get by that 86. As you can tell, Chris Mack's tires are starting to wear. Tony Raines on the inside with a big run. Dave Blaney is going to follow him here. And they're going to the front. Casey Atwood has a pretty decent sized lead, but that's not what you want with this package. As we go through one and two once again, and they're keeping it straight. Oh my goodness, Chris Mack is all over the place. We're coming around the... We're almost getting down to the end of this race now. Coming around the 21 to go this time by. And Dave Blaney challenging that 74 for the second place spot now. Tony Reigns is trying to follow the draft. Couldn't quite clear Blaney. But now he's got draft. Here comes the 54 Top Odine with a big run. Three wide through one and two. Top Odine not lifting. And he's going to take those spots. Or at least try to. He didn't clear them. And now they're side by side down the back stretch. Dave Blaney has to run off the high side. Here comes Jerry Nadir with a massive run. Big runs coming from out of nowhere here. A few guys lay back. And they got massive runs in the draft and didn't, didn't lift at all. Now they're three wide once again down the front stretch. Rusty Wallace on the inside. All this happening behind Casey Atwood in the 91. And this is what he wants to see. Chris Mack. Oh my goodness. On the back bumper of that two now. He had to let off a little bit there. But that killed his momentum. And since he has engine damage, he is not gonna He's not gonna have any straight line speed at all here. He's just trying to keep it straight here. He's in the middle of three wide. Oh, and end of the wall goes. Jerry Nadu, they somehow kept it straight, but that ended his chances of winning. And so did Top Nine get slowed down by that as well. But now Jeff Gordon, Boris said, and John Andretti trying to catch back up here. As they got held up by lap cars. And Jerry Nadu, who was involved in that hard crash earlier today, thought he had a chance at still win, but... Guess not. Oh, Tony Stewart. My goodness. Holding up the field big time here. I mean, he's nowhere near on pace. Not sure what's going on there. But lap cars getting in the way. What seemed like a possible bad day for Papyrus Racing and Chris Mack in the 86 might actually turn out well. Because they are in the top five. Oh, contact. Bad block being thrown there. They almost he almost turned himself right as I was saying that. And now pit stops getting ready to start here. Chris Mack trying to get in. Dave Blaney was as well. And he ran out of room and into the wall. Big hit. Morgan Shepherd gets collected as well. And right as we were talking about Chris Mack and the Papyrus Racing Team, they are done for the day. That 86 is destroyed. The 89 destroyed as well. And the caution is going to come out again late here in the going. As green flag pit stops were getting started. And that saved a lot of these guys because they were going to go and lap down. But luckily they didn't. Rusty Wallace is their leader. And another part to this chaotic race so far. He did have a pretty decent sized good um, green flag run there. But it's coming to an end right now. Three, the three cars that stayed out are heading down pit road now. So 
pits are open. And we're going to take a quick break. And we'll be back for the drop of the green flag and hopefully a finish of this race here on FS1. And we're back. We missed the drop of the green, but we're still here. Um, we didn't miss much. Just Jimmy Johnson um, and Matt Kenseth, two damaged race cars, just trying to get points holding up the field. So as the field gets held up here in the restart, Jeff Gordon is back up into the hunt for the win. He's up in the fourth place now. Tony Reigns in second, trying to use that draft and run down Casey Atwood. But Casey's been very strong here today. It's going to be hard to catch that 91. And Jeff Gordon moves up in the third. He gets past Boris Said in the 67. And now John Andretti, who was actually a lap down, going to the inside of Jeff Gordon. He's trying to get his lap back. He wants a chance to race for the win. If a caution were to come out after he gets his lap back, he will have that chance. But now, Jeff Burton to the inside. Three wide, trying not to let, trying not to let that happen. Had to slide up behind him there. Jeff Gordon's falling back. He has no help. John Andretti making moves here. He's going to the front. And him getting back on the lead lap is actually a pretty good possibility now. No matter how much help you have, that inside line at this track is always going to be the preferred line. And they're three wide down the front stretch. Thinking about taking it four. They almost did. And they're going to make it. John Andretti determined to take his lap back here late in the going. But I believe this is all just helping Casey Atwood. Because as long as he keeps that lap car between him and the rest of the field, he's got a free win. So we could see an underdog winner here today, Casey Atwood. Known to a lot of people as a NASCAR bust. Is um, out in front here and closing in on his first career win. Nine laps to go here from Michigan. And he's going down. He's trying to block that 43. John Andretti slides in the line behind him. Whoa, look at that run from Todd Bodine. And he's trying to get to the inside of that 43. And he does. So that's going to end uh, John Andretti's hopes. Unless he can get, he can stay in the draft. No, he couldn't clear that 54. Oh, and there's a slow car. And it's Dave Blaney. And that checked everybody up. Not too bad, though. They're still right there. They just need to try to work together. If two of these cars can stay in the draft and try to get back up there. They can get a huge run and have that 91 be a sitting duck. But I don't think any of these guys are trying to work together. We have a three-car train on the bottom now. But that's not going to last long. Look at this. Three wide down the front stretch. And seven laps to go this time by. Whoa, Tony Stewart holding up top of Top Odine and Jeff Gordon. Rip Jeff Gordon. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Gordon gets turned by Boris Said on the back stretch. And I believe that's not going to bring out the caution. No, it is not. He is down low on the racetrack. He's out of the way, out of harm's way. And they said that there's no need to throw a caution. So they're, they're keeping it green here. Look at Jeff Burton. He's got a massive run on John Andretti. Trying to get to his inside. You know he's furious with a lap car being in the way here. Maybe these Dodges are working together to try to get Casey Atwood his first win. Who knows? It's a possibility as we come around the five to go this time by. Out of turn four. Jeff Burton looking to the inside. He's finally going to get there. But John Andretti's still in the draft. Might clear him. No, he does not. And 
and here comes Jeff Burton in the 99. On the inside, his brother Ward was involved in the wreck earlier. He's still out there on the track, I believe. But has no chance of winning. It's a lap down. Here comes John and Dreddy back to the inside. And that might help the third dodge back there, Rusty Wallace, get up in the second place. Dodge is working together here with four laps to go from Michigan. And now there's Boris said, and that's going to ruin everything for Rusty Wallace because he gets held up. And now it's just a three-car dance for the, for the win. And there's a big pack back here. What in the world? The slow car showdown. Or the wrecked car showdown. I'm not sure. But they're all torn up. And they're racing for lap down positions, I believe. But meanwhile, down the front stretch, three laps to go for Casey Atwood. And Burton is on the inside of John Andre going to try to clear him. Whoa, Atwood. Oh my goodness, how did they squeeze by Dave Blaney? I have no idea how they did that. But they're side by side down the backstretch. That's what he wants to see. That's what Casey Atwood wants to see in his mirror. But now he's clear. And we got more lap traffic. Oh, this is a lot of lap traffic this time. Down the front stretch. Casey Atwood flying down the front straightaway. Two laps to go. He just needs to hold on and hold off that 99 for two more laps. And they, they all get held up. So this is helping Jeff Burton because now he's right there on that bumper. But he goes high and that's going to hurt him. And now he's getting put three wide with these lap cars. Oh no. Look out. Look out. Look out. And Jeff Burton's going to get held up. White flag in the air this time by one more time around for Casey Atwood. Can he do it? Can he pull off the upset here today at, at Michigan International Speedway? Heading into turns one and two for the final time. More lap traffic. That's Tony Stewart. He holds up Jeff Burton big time. That's what Casey Atwood needed. He's got it in the bag at this point. Heading down the back stretch and in a turn three for the final time out of turn four. Casey Atwood is going to do the unthinkable at Michigan and win his first race. Casey Atwood, the upset winner at Michigan. And that's Top O'Dine stealing second late there as a lot of these guys just flew by. Jeff Burton as he got held up by a slow a slower car. I believe that was Tony Stewart that held him up. And um cost him a lot of spots there. So this will definitely shake up the points. We're gonna actually go take a look at points right now. Casey Atwood with the win. After just a couple of starts. He hasn't even made that many starts really. So um championship. Up next, as I said, it's in Finney and Raceway. And um, their points are Rusty Wallace leading the points as Jeff Burton second. That really hurt him, losing all those positions. Uh, but, yeah, going by wins, Mark Martin has two. Rusty Wallace has one. Dale Jarrett has one. Dale Jr. has one. Kurt Busch. Jeff Gordon. Ricky Craven, Kenny Wallace, Michael Walter, but Ryan Newman all have wins, as well as, excuse me, um, Derek, okay, Casey Atwood just got his win there, Derek Cope, I, I completely forgot he won, that's another upset winner, and, uh, wait, what, two Ryan Newmans? Oh no, that's terrible. Okay, I didn't even notice that, but it is what it is. Two different Ryan Newman's won. Uh, can't do anything to change that now. Two different Mark Martin's won as well. So technically, Mark Martin. Wait. Yeah. It's two. So th technically, Ryan Newman has t two wins this season. And so does uh, Mark Martin. But... It was two different car files, so of course it's not going to be counted. 
blah, blah, blah. I can't do anything to change that. Um, I could do the points myself, but I'm just too lazy, so we're going to have to deal with it. Up next is Infineon Raceway. And, um, yeah, that should be pretty exciting. Road course. Uh, twists and turns. Let's so take another look at your point standings. Kurt Busch has fallen all the way back to sixth. I believe he was leading a couple of a couple of races ago, and uh, John is ready, sitting there in 20 points. Now further down, Chris Mack, after a ton of DNFs, where is he? Here he is, 41st in points, and uh, Casey Atwood, 46 in points. So these guys, they won't be championship contenders, but Atwood does have the win to his name, and hopefully we can see him next season, in the 2004 season, um, full time racing for the championship. But uh, that'll do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe. Hope to see you guys next race, and until then, peace.